Tonight on the weekly R and R, Great Britain leaves the European Union. What does this mean for you, me, and the cast of Game of Thrones? <sighs> Hey everybody, welcome to another wacky, waving, inflatable arm flailing R&R, where we recap, and then we review. Damn straight. Like always, this is, this is my man Link. <laughs> and that is my man Gutter. Hey. First. Darth Vader has been confirmed to appear in the Star Wars Rogue One movie, and James Earl Jones is confirmed to be voicing him. That is correct. I've heard some news in relation to that, that somebody involved in the project was saying that he would only be used sparingly. Mm. Which is good, because I think a powerful and imposing character like that should only be on screen very few times so that their impact For maximum is felt. effect. Exactly. Mm. Hannibal Lecter, the Joker, that should be the case. Where fewer, not necessarily, it's not directly the case, you know what I mean? Like, don't just put him on the screen for one second. That doesn't immediately equal impact, but you know. Pick your spots. Is it kind of depends on the scenario of the movie. Right. Clearly, it's not out. We don't know full details of it. But now, you know, there was speculation he was in it. Now they're saying, yes, he is in it. And to make it even better, it's James Earl Jones, who, you know, was the voice in the, in the original trilogy. So it's, it's all great and all. But like you said, if you don't want to... It's not a movie about him. He just has a part in it. So people are excited to see him again. So to get the original guy is fantastic. But now, like you said, if you want to use him sparingly or if you want to emphasize certain situations that would have a bigger impact than just having him scattered throughout because people want to see him just Demin to, that would diminish his his presence if he was just there to be there right just for the sake of demand mm -hmm. i'm still very up in the air about what rogue one is can be and will be because i hear so many conflicting stories with just the other week we were discussing the complete overhaul of the scripts and now we're getting this great news about about a more proper use of of darth vader and it's it's very much still a wait and see for me there's good signs and bad signs all around so i'm reserving my full judgment do you think at some point he's gonna get angry and just smash a bunch of computers with his lightsaber <laughs> Like a moody teenager. Imagine He's that nice... More controlling in his rage. That nice, deep, uh, James Earl Jones voice. Just being really upset. Next! Mighty Number no. 9 got released. Keiji Inafune, his little pet project, now that he's no longer officially with Capcom and working on Mega Man, mm. got some pretty bad reviews. A lot of pretty bad reviews. It, it was delayed a lot, and people were complaining a lot about the frame rate. Mighty Number no. 9 being... The newest project of the guy who made Mega Man. Right. In the same sort of spirit, side-scrolling, 2D, cartoony, one arm's an arm, the other arm's a cannon. Yeah, just... that, that's what they were trying to go for. That's what they said was going to happen on the Kickstarter, and a lot of people backed it on the Kickstarter, mm. so much they made the credits four hours long. That's a lot of names. It is. No! If you contributed to that Kickstarter, and you knew your name was in there, mm -hmm. would you sit there for four hours to find your place? I would contribute a little bit more to say, hey, condense the credits a little bit. <laughs> 45 minutes instead of four hours. Put a couple more names on the screen at the same time. An extra perk, an extra tier. <laughs> I was going to say, the Sonic tie-in with that is the fact that there was a little Twitter uh, insult back and forth. Yeah. Or, or at the very least, just At least a... just fourth. Maybe not so much back. Anyway, so, because Mighty Number no. 9 did so poorly and... Um, the uh, creator there, the producer, whatever his, his title is, he basically said the full game was better than nothing. And so the official Sonic the Hedgehog Twitter tweeted at them, Hey, Mighty Number no. 9, congrats on the new game. It's better than nothing. With a hilarious little picture of Sonic. It would only be fitting if it was the shitty Sonic Boom version of Sonic mm. that had those freaky legs. It's and better than nothing. he was shrugging, because those games are, like, worse than nothing. Yeah, that's comedy, though. I can appreciate a good Twitter beef between a couple of oh, any shit, day. shit titles. Any day. <laughs> Next! Sony's planning a Silver Sable movie within the Spider-Man Marvel Cinematic Universe. That's got to have you excited, Gutter. Well, well, depends on how you look at it. It's great, you know, continuation. People love Spider-Man. You yeah, want to see you want to see more of him. You want to see more of those characters that exist within his universe. universe. It's a female character, which everybody's wanted for a long time. A standalone female character movie. Now, 
you know, is it too late? They're already planning Captain Marvel. Everyone wants Black Widow. There's going to be Wonder Woman. Now we're finally getting, like, I mean, is Silver Sable cream of the crop? Or is that sort of, you know, middle of the pack? I mean, I've always heard a lot of arguments about that. But, like, I've never doubted the potential of superheroes becoming cream of the crop based on the success of a good movie. See Guardians of the Galaxy. Just kind of refreshing and reading up about her. Apparently she has, like, no power. She's more of an anti-hero. So I'm kind of wondering if they're playing off Deadpool's success being an anti-hero. I didn't see anybody else mention, well, if they have, I just haven't seen it. But what I thought was because Sony and Marvel came to that agreement, Sony, Marvel, Disney, to use Spider-Man in the Marvel Cinematic Universe with the likes of Iron Man, Thor, Hulk, Captain America, and all that. And even that he showed up in the Avengers, so now he exists in that same universe. So now... So where does Silver Sable play into all this? Silver Sable, they're saying, is going to be in the Spider-Man movie universe, but his movie universe coincides with the Marvel Disney universe. So was Disney allowed to use Sony's Spider-Man characters and vice versa? And if this Silver Sable is in Spider-Man's universe, then does that mean she also exists in <sighs> Disney Marvel's cinematic universe? I'm, I'm just curious. You're already what, getting enough of our money, giant companies. Or the line begins For God's sake, just get along. Give us all the characters that are supposed to be in the universe that they're supposed to be in. Mm, Who do you want to see as Silver Sable? I don't know. Some trending upward young Hollywood starlet. Jennifer Lawrence taken. Yeah, she's... Mystique. Mystique. Yeah, she could do both, right? We got two Quicksilvers. We can have two Jennifer Lawrences. Yes! So, with that new Power Rangers movie, that reboot, that reimagining, whatever it may be, yeah. coming out with the new set photos, the casting, Elizabeth Banks as Rita Repulsa, revealing of the armor, a new movie poster that me and you saw before recording here. Now it's come out that Brian Cranston is no longer Breaking Bad. He's now breaking all the rules. Making all the rules, because he's Zordon. He is going to play Zordon. Oh. Now, whether that means he's just a voice along the lines of James Earl Jones' Invader, if he's going to be the floating head and the voice, or are they going to reimagine Zordon completely to be just some guy played by Brian Cranston? I'm hoping it's the middle option you would just mention there. As head and as voice? Head and voice. The traditional Zordon? A, a bit more of a traditional Zordon. But either way, I think... As an acting performance, Brian Cranston can knock it out of the park. He's one of the best actors on this planet right now. A lot of range. He's done a lot of stuff on Broadway, too. I'm a big fan of his, and I'm excited for anything that he does. Even if I've had mixed reactions on everything that I've seen from this Power Rangers movie so far. With I wasn't a big fan of the new uh, suits that they're in. But one thing I know for sure is going to be damn good about this movie. Brian Cranston. Brian Cranston. A lot of hype. Coming out because of E3, Legend of Zelda, Breath of the Wild, getting yes. a lot of attention. A lot of hype. So the producer? Creator? I would say the main one of one. A.G. Onuma, right? A.G. Onuma, the, one of the men behind Legend of Zelda, if not the man, said um, after what he's learned making Breath of the Wild, he's thinking in future Zelda games, they could have multiplayer. I wonder what he might mean by that. He seems, I mean, that's obviously a very vague statement, and mm -hmm. it remains to be seen what elements there might be of that statement in Breath of the Wild, but there have been multiplayer Zelda games before with yeah. four swords, and there have been several iterations of it, but it's, and Triforce Heroes as well, but it's never really that's felt a like point. a full Zelda, because a lot of times when they've had the multiplayer levels, it's been in particular levels. It's never been open world, full exploration Zelda in multiplayer. It's always been confined to here's one level and there's the end of a level and it's been a lot more linear and it's never felt like true Zelda as a lot of people feel it and have experienced it in single player. What about compared to modern day popular current mainstream multiplayer where it's always competitive it's always arena style it's either team versus team free for all within an arena have they done something like that would that even work just a team of links could you choose your characters i mean i guess he showed up in smash brothers but that wasn't a legend of zelda game no right they brought the character over right and they've never done anything like an actual battle arena or anything not like call of duty no links running around shooting his arrows at and long shots at other links. Right, and I think that's the thing that um, <laughs> is that what it would be I'm most or? excited for, yeah. for the potential of, with that statement from Onuma, is the fact that that is a possibility, or even cooperative exploration through dungeons and 
what you could do with all of that. It still remains to be seen. A lot of rumors and a lot of uncertainties to this point, but they're exciting rumors and they're exciting uncertainties for what remains to be seen in the world of Zelda and the world of Nintendo. Boom. Another one in the books, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for doing all you do. Watching and supporting and loving and, yeah, you know, liking, commenting, all that. If that does happen to occur, it is right down below. All that usual YouTube garbage that they, that they pander. Just saying. And uh, we'll see you in the European Union. We'll see you in the wild, the breath of the wild. Bye. <laughs>